Well, quite a lot of things have uh, transferred. Uh, in particular, we talked about the Anambara governorship elections, which is coming up on the 6th of uh, November this year. And uh, we want to assure the people of Anambara State and indeed all Nigerians that the government is committed to conducting those elections and it has to be free and fair. Uh, we are going to put every machinery in place to ensure that uh, people are well secured and uh, we are going to dominate the uh, place to ensure that uh, uh, this place is calm and quiet to provide for a free and fair elections and uh, that is the only the way to ensure that we promote democracy and good governance in this country. Yes. What other things have we discussed? Well, we'll discuss uh, generally the security matters that as they apply to other states of the Federation. And the general assessment is that uh, the situation is uh, improving, even though the challenging issues are still very important. But uh, by and large, progress is being made in the area of maintenance of peace and security in the country. Yeah. Well, we looked at that and... Uh, the reports coming in are indicating that uh, even though the bandits are there, but uh, they, are, they are moving towards areas where uh, there, are no, there are communications that they can talk to people. But uh, the situation is improving even in those areas. Of course, the situation is still not as good as we expect it to be, but uh, we are on top of the situation. No, no, no. The intention is to ensure people who have started, we are starting right away, so that to ensure to give people confidence that they are well protected from these IPOP people. Uh, people are not coming out because of the threats by IPOP, and uh, as long as we try to dominate the area, IPOP will have no place to maneuver, and uh, we will take charge of the place to ensure that there is uh, peace, there is uh, tranquility in the area to allow for free and fair elections. In this case. Order from the president to the service chiefs and others. The president has continued to give the security agencies the go-ahead to deal with these uh, bandits in the best way they understand. So, so he has given them all the support and he has assured them that he is uh, behind them. Uh, anybody caught using arms that are not supposed to be used by him, it should be dealt with uh, appropriately. What do you mean in dealing with them in the best way they understand? Yeah, I mean they should be dealt with according to the law. Okay, so what do you want Nigerians to know about this latest meeting of the National Security Council? Today's meeting of the National Security Council focused its attention on several issues. Primarily the elections in um, Anambra State, which will be held on the 6th of November. Council observed recent trends in which a lot of uh, violent activities have been taking place and Council is desirous of seeing a uh, hitch-free election being conducted uh, by, by next month. Now the problem here is that in as much as the government wants to conduct peaceful elections there are non-state actors who have been heating up the polity, who have made all kinds of attempts to stymie orderly elections for next month. The president has directed that under no circumstances will anything be allowed to stop the elections from 
taking place successfully. The people have a right to vote. They have a right to select their leader and no group or individual will be allowed to stimulate anarchy and chaos leading to murderous activities. The president has made it very, very clear that the armed forces, security agencies and law enforcement agencies must make sure that the elections take place. If it means overwhelming the entire environment with the presence of security agencies, there are so many implications for elections to be sabotaged by non-state actors. In the first place, we're in a democracy. Secondly, it is important to note that if these non-state actors should succeed in destroying the potentials for orderly elections, then it is natural that other parts of the country will also want to copy this uh, situation. Secondly, uh, it's not something that President Buhari will even contemplate a situation in which he's boxed into a corner. The, 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 the mere thought that a group of non-state actors want to portray his government as not being able to be firm is totally out of the question. The, the, the tail cannot wag the dog. It is totally unacceptable and again, we in the security and intelligence community have been trying as much as possible to talk with the leadership in the Southeast to make them aware of the fact that President Buhari is not averse to the aspirations of the people of the Southeast. So long as whatever they desire to achieve, they do it through the normal prescribed manner, either legislative, legal, or whatever. For as long as it is within the confines of legitimacy, President Buhari does not have a problem with that. But any action that is outlandish, any action that typ typifies roguery, the usurpation of the authority of the state is not going to be tolerated. Again, we are also mindful of the fact that Nigerians, being what they are, also need to understand that if these non-state actors should go out on a limb and extend the frontiers of violence and begin to kill people, there is a possibility that reprisal attacks can take place in other parts of the country, which is what we do not want to happen. So we're working with the community leaders, with the governors and everybody to ensure that they bring their people, restrain them on the leash. So that is uh, uh, one aspect that was uh, discussed during the meeting. Other aspects basically have to do with the current state of security in the country and the sub-region. Of course, the armed forces and the security agencies have done so much in the last couple of months. But let, let me say clearly, in the last six months, they've been able to record a lot of successes. Now, the, the issue here is that it's not very easy for the wider society to appreciate the successes being recorded by the armed forces because there will definitely be incidents of uh, misadventure. This is a symmetric conflict. It's not like the normal conventional war in which territories are won, you grapple with the enemy, you defeat him and you move on. Here we have the enemy embedded in society coming from all parts. And like I once said, Someone had remarked after the Brighton bombing of 1984 that the difference between the, the, the terrorist or the criminal and the state is that it only takes one act for the terrorist to succeed and gain a lot of um, publicity. But for the armed forces, for the government and its agencies, you have to succeed on every occasion. 
Otherwise, after 12 successes, if you fail or you have a problem on the 13th occasion, nobody wants to know. So this is the, the, the situation with which we are faced. But nevertheless, I'll just highlight uh, that the chief of defense staff, service chiefs, and the intelligence heads briefed council. And I can tell you that for the land forces, they've recorded a lot of successes in the last two months. We've had a steady increase in the number of uh, returnees, both uh, combatants and non-combatants from the theater of operation, both from the uh, Islamic State West Africa province and the Boko Haram enclaves. Now what has happened is we're now uh, having to contend with 15,852 returnees. This in its own case is uh, accompanied by problems, humanitarian problems, problems of logistics, problems of profiling each and every one because we are not just interested in profiling the, 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 the ex-combatants, we are also interested in profiling those people who are assumed to be non-combatants who may have reached out and assisted the terrorists in one way or the other. Now, the, the, the fact again is that the armed forces, the land forces have done an excellent job because in the span of one month, we've been <clears throat> able to take out the leadership of the Islamic State West Africa province, that is... Um, Abu Musab al-Barnawi. Al Two days ago, the man who succeeded him, one Malambako, who is also the, uh, one of the prominent uh, leaders of the Shura Council of the Islamic State West Africa province was also taken out, which means basically Shekau is out, Abu al-Barnawi uh, uh, al is out, now Malam Bako is out. They are also contending with leadership. And you know, these things are also accompanied by a lot of inherent uh, issues of trust, conflict, uh, mutual suspicion, and other things. So the operations being conducted by the armed forces in the northern part of the country, that is operations um, Thunderstrike, operation uh, Hadarin Daji, Operation Gamma Aiki, Operation Dukan Guduma, all these, if you aggregate these operations, they put a lot of pressure on the leadership of the, of the Islamic State West Africa province, Boko Haram, and also the tangential group known as Islamic State in the Greater Sahara. Now the successes of the land forces have also been uh, reinforced by the activities of uh, the, the Air Force. The Air Force has carried out a lot of interdiction missions. And so far, the number of missions they've carried out have yielded a lot of uh, successes, especially in supporting other operations, like the operations in the North Central Operation Safe Haven in uh, the plateau, then Operation World Stroke in, Pla in, in Benue, Taraba, and Nasarawa states, while at the same time they've also supported operations uh, in the southeast, Operation Golden Dawn, and in the south-south, Operation Delta Save. And uh, for the Nigerian Navy, it has not experienced the type of success it has experienced in the last six months. I can tell you on authority that the Nigerian Navy, uh, under the leadership of the uh, Chief of the Naval Staff, has recorded so much success in the maritime domain. What it has done in the last six months is to deploy its uh, maritime domain awareness capabilities or assets to deal with the situation in, in, in the maritime domain, that is using the falcon eye and using the regional maritime awareness capability. What this has resulted in is that in the last quarter, the, the third quarter of this year, there has not been a single incident of piracy or sea robbery in our entire maritime domain. This has been acknowledged, not just by our own um, 
governmental services, but by the International uh, Maritime Bureau. On the 14th of July, they sent out a dispatch in which it, uh, the dispatch stated that in the last 27 years, the entire international community, the maritime community, has not experienced the type of success that has been recorded by the Nigerian Navy. And this was also endorsed by the Defense Web on the, on the 16th of October in another dispatch. So you can see, and again, to buttress my, my point, the Nigerian Navy has also been able to re-establish the presence of uh, the military in the Lake Chad area, which has been abandoned for a long time. Not only have they re-established the presence of our military elements, but they've also reactivated the fisheries, College of Fisheries in, in Baga. So you can see that the Army, Navy, Air Force, the entire armed forces have been doing a very tremendous uh, job and being supported by the intelligence services. Only two days ago, um, the DSS was able to apprehend and take in um, the successor of the notorious gangster in Benue State known as Ghana. So his own successor, uh, Bet uh, whose, whose name is uh, Chekere Kefas Aundofa, has been arrested. His other name is um, Azonto. And as soon as he was apprehended by the DSS, his own successor was ad arrested also about 16 hours ago. So you can see that despite all the challenges we're having, the armed forces and the intelligence agencies have been able to find a way to work in synergy, to link together, work harmoniously to ensure that there's, uh, the, we have greater success in the theater of operation. Of course, President Buhari, in as much as he's satisfied with the actions of our defense and security forces, has also urged them not to relent. You know, of course, as a retired general, he knows that in operations there will always be lulls. Sometimes victory begets, you know, other issues like complacency, lethargy, and other things, but he has stated clearly that we must bring this thing to an end, working, of course, in partnership with our regional uh, colleagues. The new theater of war seems to be in Nigeria Rail Services. We have seen an attack yesterday night. What effort are you going to make to ensure that the asset has been saved? Well, well efforts right now are underway. Uh, as you already know yesterday the president had a, an important visitor the president of turkey just like he's had discussions with the president of turkey he's had prayer discussions with other leaders on how we can share intelligence and acquire technical capabilities to deal with these uh, emerging threats so it is basically a matter of looking at where we can get uh, equipment and uh, assets to deal with these uh, threats. It's okay, it's okay,